conversation and go from there. Um, so, Governor Landry, first, RNC, is this your first Republican convention? It actually is. It is. is. It? Uh, I, you yeah. know, I asked to think you're going to be like, no, no, no. This is like my fourth or fifth one. No, it is. Actually, hmm. when I was elected uh, attorney general in 2015 mm -hmm. uh, and then went to 2016 convention, which was, I think, in Cleveland. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were actually on our way there and we had a number of offices um, being sh that were shot uh, down in mm -hmm. Baton Rouge. And um, that was during that whole we had a it was just a terrible year for officer involved shootings. And so as the attorney general. We were not going to continue on with the convention. It just came all the way back home to to deal with that. So we missed that, and then of course COVID happened. We missed yep. that, and so yeah, this is uh, this is me and my wife's first time. Great, we love it. Uh, the Republican convention was actually in New Orleans, I think, in nineteen either eighty eight or eighty four. Okay. Um, so maybe one day we'll get. I was just say, yeah. keep putting in the application. No, I am. Yeah, down. we are absolutely going to put the application in. Excellent. <laughs> I, I want to talk about money. I, it's it's my favorite topic. Okay. Uh, economy is always the number one issue when we do all of the different polls, read all the different things for the Republican Party and its platform going forward. We have Donald Trump coming in, and I've spoken to a number of different uh, governors, Senate candidates, etc., who are all talking about, of course, reducing some of the government expenditures but then also spending more specifically down at the border. Are you also in line with that? Absolutely. Look, look. I, let me tell you something. Here's the disappointing thing, because I served in Congress, and I watched, I watched the spending spree. Mm -hmm. um, not only are we spending too much money, but we're not even spending the money in the right places. Okay? I'll give you an example. We did an infrastructure bill, I forget when, and nothing really went to infrastructure. I mean, if we, if we took the money that we were going to employ— um, and created efficiencies inside of government and said, okay, we're going to point this money where it needs to be in our infrastructure, on the border, solidify the border, repair our roads, our bridges, our sewer systems, our water systems. But have our, I, Just deal with basic infrastructure, with the things that government is supposed to spend the money on, rather than all of the things that they're spending the money on that we can't even see. And it's so, so, so corrupt. But, yeah, I would hope that Washington would rein themselves in I think that they would look and create efficiencies. I think there are programs. I mean, look, our federal bureaucracy is is just enumerated with programs that don't even need to exist anymore. Uh, and so that's what I think um, the federal government and Congress, it's really Congress's job mm -hmm. uh, to do that. But, yes, I agree with that. I think that's what we should do. On the state level, then, how do you justify the tax dollar expense that will go to defend the Ten Commandments law? Oh, that, well, listen, that is extremely easy because as attorney general, we defended a number of laws that the, that the legislature uh, enacted because we th I think that the benefit of what we're trying to do certainly outweighs any of the expenditures out mm. there. And I think this is one of the cases where the, where the court has it wrong. And so here's the question. Yeah. If the Supreme Court has something wrong, why would you not want that to be corrected? Like, what is the price you would pay to correct that? Um I mean, we take the Ten Commandments. I didn't know it was a bad way to live your life. In fact, I would I would submit that you, maybe if the Ten Commandments were hanging on um, Clark Cooper's wall in the school that he was in, maybe mm. he wouldn't have took a shot at the president. Huh? How about that? Mm. You know, um, I have heard, you know, after the legislature passed that bill and I signed it, I have heard from so many teachers, retired, a lot of them are retired teachers because those were teachers that remembered when the Ten Commandments did hang and other great documents um, of our history and our past hung on the walls of schools. And so I, I would say, look, I, I tell you, it's it's a price that I'm glad to pay uh, to hopefully keep kids out of crime, um, to reduce violence, uh, and to bring some civility back to the country and to the world as well. Well, and depending on the outcome, it may actually allow some of your neighboring governors to follow something similar. I had Governor Reeves sitting in the same chair, and he said, I'm going to steal that idea, and perhaps in the next Mississippi legislature session, they too will look at a Ten Commandments. Thing. I would encourage Tate. In fact, I did. I told him that. I said, look, I think you did. Him and I, you know, Mississippi and Louisiana in the same, and Texas in the same uh, federal circuit, in the Fifth Circuit, which is one of the most conservative circuits uh, in the country, thanks to Donald Trump. And um, and look, I think the way that we position the law, uh, we're in a great place to win. We've got an unbelievable attorney general. Mississippi has one as well. Texas has one as well. I hope both states pass one. 
Well, there you go. And maybe that's the future. I, another money question for you. This one's specifically about a line item veto that you use to cancel a $1 million effectively payment to the Catholic Charities of Acadiana that operates homeless shelters in Lafayette. Do you feel that that was an appropriate use of a line item veto? Oh, absolutely. I mean, because what's not reported is the $2.5 million, two million that we gave Catholic Charities uh, to upgrade their facilities to give them emergency generators. Let, let me tell you, we have been, especially in Louisiana, uh, we have gotten accustomed, we have been addicted, uh, non-government organizations, NGOs and charitable organizations have become addicted to the public trough. That's not where charitable organizations should seek their mm-hmm. money. Charitable organizations, and I'm a Catholic, if Catholic charities believe they need a million dollars, they can pass it on a second collection in mass. But no one, I never hear that, oh, this one's for the charity. And, and the things that they're doing in immigration concern me as well. Mm. I mean, they are aiding and abetting the illegal immigration problem in this country. Uh, I have had those discussions uh, uh, with uh, church leaders and, and they express that to them. And so, but if they believe that that's the direction that they, Catholic charities should take, let them go to the parishioners and let them get their money out of the parishioners' coughs. Look, our tax dollars should be going to things just like I talked about, infrastructure, mm-hmm. okay, protecting um, our water supplies, our, uh, you know, our roads, our bridges, things that we desperately need in Louisiana rather than Edward. So, yes, I do. I, I stand on that. Okay. Um, the two and a, Again, like I said, the $2.5 million that we did give them that no one wanted to report about were things that were absolutely necessary because guess what? If we don't give them those emergency generators when the next hurricane comes, I'm going to be providing it for them anyway, and the federal government's going to be paying for it on a rental. So we said, yeah, that was good, but the other million dollars, no. And then they never came and said, this is what we want to use the million dollars for. And we've seen the things, again, let me just add to this. We have seen, and many Louisianans have seen, the way that some of these NGOs are aiding and abetting the illegal immigration problem in this country, and that's problematic. So the issue was the individuals that were taking advantage of the shelters. Well, no, it's, it is it is the organizations. and it, mm-hmm. Look, here's the difference about charity and government. Okay. Okay. In charity... You have a charitable idea. You have a goal. You go out there and you say, this is something I want to do. And then you go out there and you see individuals and you ask for donations from them. If those individuals believe in your mission, they give to you. When they quit believing in your mission, they quit giving to you. That's not how the government works. Your tax dollars, you pay it no matter matter what. what. Right. Okay. And the only way you get redress on being able to direct how your tax dollars are spent is through your legislature. And so, again, and then, again, this, this amendment came up in the dark of night. Like, it, it wasn't something that began at the beginning of the legislative session. Hmm. This thing popped up right at the, the, the very end in conference. I'm like, no, 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 no. Nobody came. It's a million dollars. It's a lot of money. I can fix a bunch of bridges in Louisiana for a million dollars. And so I stand on it. I have no problem defending all of the vetoes that we, we utilized. Awesome. Oh, that's the answer I would hope to hear from you, Governor. Absolutely. All right. That does it.